Hi, welcome to Focus on Liberia. I am the West African correspondent, Edward Amara. Welcome to a special Boxing Day edition. Uh, Focus on Liberia uses this particular opportunity to come to you with the latest development on the continent. We know Africa is a very interesting country, a continent. Uh, we have various development taking place on the continent. Some are actually favorable, some are definitely not favorable. And because of our past colonial uh, event or impacts or what a colonial event that actually took place on the continent, we have realized that most of what happened on other people's continent, especially in Europe, does have a uh, water effect on the continent. And that have created huge controversy on the continent. And there are times our leaders are forced to behave in a type of puppet way. Like uh, you are forced to maybe adhere to the norms of certain Western dispensation. There are times even when your colonial masters condemn certain things, you have been forced to either condemn the issue or uh, most of your support given to you can easily be withdrawn. And uh, it has also left us in the position that we, are, we cannot decide on our own. We have seen how certain laws on the continent actually do not favor our culture, but they create negative renaissance. What need renaissance is a total change into our culture or something positive. But because of our affiliation with the West and because our economies are crippled, and um, because we are politically independent, but economically we are not independent, and that has actually crossed all into behaving in certain way that we can even affect that can even affect the very people that our African leaders are claiming to govern. Like you see, like gay rights coming on the continent when Africa actually do not favor it. It's against our religion. It's against our moral way of conduct. All of those things we are crossed to either accept it or they withdraw certain support. Now we. This is a special Boxing Day edition, and I have with me in the studio Emerson Fawai. He's a veteran teacher, a journalist, a human rights activist, and uh, he's a very good writer. He's a colleague, and I know him for quite a long time, and I know him because of his independent view. As I was saying, today we are going to watch at the Israeli-Ukraine uh, war. I mean, the, the Russian Ukraine war, and also we are going to watch at Israel Gaza world, and we we'll see the impacts that SED is actually creating on us in Africa. Because for far too long, every anything that happened into the West affect us, but it, it has never have a total effect on our way of behaving here yeah, compared to the current thing that we are experiencing. So today we want to take this opportunity to actually watch at the Ukraine or, or Russia-Ukraine war and its impact on Africa. We're going to watch like the political divide, economic crisis. We're going to also watch at the fear crisis. Then uh, we watch at this thing and maybe try to provide a solution. If without the West, we cannot think independently. Emerson, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Well, um, thank you so much uh, for having me again, though you've had me in the past, and I'm glad it's my heart to be with you again today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Let's try to see Ukraine, Russia. Of course, Ukraine is in Europe. Russia is partly in Europe and partly in Asia. But billions of miles away from us, political event taking place. In fact, when we are not directly involved into the war, but look at how that war has crippled our African economy. What is really going on? Well, um, well that reminds me of what we call, um, uh, uh, let's say, uh, interconnectedness, or no one is independent of the other, or the world is a global village. Like uh, Anything that happens to one person affects another person. Another. And now, uh, fast forward, uh, the Ukraine, uh, Russia, Ukraine war, really, the tension really reached all time high in 2014. And uh, of recent, uh, in 2002, I think in February, you know, the two countries went into full blown war. So we are almost uh, nearing now a year since the two countries went into a full blown uh, conflict. Um, coming back to the impacts of the 
uh, Russia and Ukraine war. Uh, firstly, let's look at the the, the economic aspect. Um, Russia, indisputably, is, um, for instance, when we talk about petroleum products, Russia is the third largest uh, producer of uh, crude oil, I would say. And so if such a country is involved in a conflict with another country, and we've seen sanctions being imposed on Russia, I think uh, the consequences are far-reaching. Because, um, strictly speaking, African countries, we get uh, our petroleum products mostly from, from the West. And so if one of the, the, the producers is being sanctioned, I think that, um, I mean, unavoidably affects us. And today, the reality is seen almost everywhere on the continent. It is pinching us, and though some countries are putting measures in place to push in the effect, the effects of the Russia Ukraine war. But to be very honest, we are not directly involved in the war, but uh, we are. Um, I mean, the, the, the consequences are biting us seriously, Edward. Okay, thank you very much. As you rightly say, we are not directly involved into the war. And uh, we we are not even part of any negotiation that actually failed that led to the war. And uh, this issue has been alarming for quite a long time. And we know by norms, Russia have actually been complaining that uh, any attempt for Ukraine to join the EU, uh, especially when uh, NATO, NATO yeah. would be involved, joining EU and also because becoming EU, a member of EU, we give you access maybe to become a member of NATO. It's a kind of not an alliance treaty. Although uh, NATO have that what collective responsibility. And Russia having known that Ukraine is like maybe just part of a rift because around 8 million Ukrainians or Russians are actually li living in the Donbass region of, 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 of Ukraine. And they are actually Russian. They speak the same language. And uh, after World War II, agreement was being reached between the West and Russia that even if all other countries join Russia, then those areas are actually East, should not, especially countries in the East of Europe, should definitely not join the EU. Because any attempt for them to join the EU or NATO maybe will lead to the crippling or maybe infringing of the right of Russia because it is viewed that Russia have maximum impact on those countries. So when they violated it, Russia was actually forced, and we have seen on several occasions, the Donbass region before this time, Russia have actually been at war with, uh, with Ukraine. But unfortunately, Africans are not involved into the war. We did not support it, and we did not condemn it to certain countries. And we are not part of anything that led to the war. You started something important. You start on the economic crisis, eh? Of course, yeah. And the economic crisis. Now see how our countries have been affected because of the Russia and Ukraine war. Even food is definitely not enough on the continent. Yeah, I just touched yeah, one yeah, of the Yeah, yeah, yeah. If food is not enough into the continent. But let's come now. What is actually leading Africa to having the inability of producing food? on our own, when we have very vast land, unarguably we have the youngest population on the on, on, on yeah, earth. Yeah, the youth, yeah, yeah. Then, even when you watch at uh, the West, maybe uh, that is why you are now seeing global crisis, especially in type of uh, global warming, they are saying that we should not touch our forest. If we have to invest into agriculture, eh? we have the vast land, water resources over there. I'm talking about the human capital. We have enough human capital. Then even our economy, certain, we have certain natural reserves there, which are definitely untouchable. Africa can use it. But it has taken a long time. So have you seen why it is wrong to actually become independent or dependent on somebody, anything that happened? What is really crippling us that maybe the Russia and Ukraine war could be like an opportunity for Africa to develop on the own? To realize that there is nothing, but why? Yeah, um, like I started saying, mm -hmm. uh, no country in the whole world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But can we use this as an opportunity? I'm coming. No country in the whole world, mm -hmm. even the major economies, mm -hmm. that is really completely independent of the other. Yeah, but this again is a wake up call to our African leaders. Mm -hmm. You know that uh, this over dependence on the West. You know, so whenever they sneeze, uh, we feel cold. And the Ukraine war has just exposed, you know, African leaders, yeah? Mm -hmm. Like I was talking about the, the, the petroleum products, for mm -hmm. instance. I think Russia is the third 
as I said. Mm -hmm. So if their petroleum products have been banned mm -hmm. on the market, that, I mean, apparently translates into shortage of, of, of petroleum products. And, and that, we are feeling that. We are feeling the pinch of that in, in Africa. Interestingly, we have enough of the resources on the continent. Of course, but again, mm -hmm. we shall come there. Mm -hmm. Again, like I was saying, we need the technology. We have the resources. How long? Yeah, but how can we harness those resources to benefit us? For instance, we are, we are talking about agriculture. Mm -hmm. The other time, I saw the president of, uh, of Sininga, uh, uh, Makassar. Makassar, going to Russia, you know, pleading with, pleading. Them, with, with Vladimir Putin and back and back and to allow uh, a wheat to come to his country. We has because, enough forest. Yeah, because Senegal, I think, uh, bread, most of the people there live on bread. Mm -hmm. So that is that is telling us again that this over-dependence on the West, I mean, should be something of the past. Because Africa, we have everything it takes. You know, sometimes when I follow orators, you know, sometimes I shake my head in despair. Because why is it that Africa, for instance, Professor Lumumba was asking the other day, though the question was highly rhetorical, why is it that Africa we are able to feed ourselves? We have the land, we have favorable weather conditions, but we are unable to feed ourselves. Now, the Russia war has just exposed us. In Sierra here, for instance, where we live, we are seeing how things are skyrocketing every day. Because Matthew fuel, what we call gas or petroleum products, Hmm? We can't do without them. We can't do without goods. Really, I mean, for instance, here yeah, almost prices in Sierra for instance, have, have doubled in the last uh, one year. Yeah, because Can the you prices say triple. Well, I say double for now. I don't want to <laughs> exactly. No, it's unnecessary. Okay. They have triple. Yeah, yeah, because the prices of fuel have gone up, and businesses do not thrive. Without movement, hmm? goods and services, people move. Yeah, so the, the, the Russian world has affected us in that direction. But then, then also coming to agriculture again, mm -hmm. for instance, talking about wheat, flour, and some other things. Yeah, so it is high time African leaders, I mean, changed the, 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 the mentality now of saying we depend on the West, we look forward to them, they bring us food, they bring all this. Why can't we do it by ourselves? And well, we have everything. This is what I'm saying. I, Why I can't we use we, this we, we, war we as an to, opportunity? Uh, we need to revolu revolutionize agriculture now in Africa. We need to move away from this uh, subsistence farming. Hmm? And I, I live in a rural setting. I will discuss this in a manor river basin. Um, we see how we are inter interdependent. For instance, I live on the border axis. We see sometimes when something happens in Liberia, it spills over to Sierra Leone. But Again, if we all come together as Africans or African leaders, let's say, let's go back to the soil. Hmm? Let's invest in agriculture. I'm happy the, the president of Sierra Leone, um, uh, in his uh, re-election, uh, his uh, inaugural speech, uh, he has promised feeding the nation, hmm? feeding the nation campaign. It is time that we should feed ourselves. We have everything it takes. Hmm? But again, this subsistence farming will not take us anywhere, Edward. So one of the impacts, as you as you were asking me, of the uh, Russian-Ukraine war, is the issue of uh, 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 petroleum products. As we speak now, the shortage of fear on the market in Sierra Leone. But let's and let's let's see certain countries in Africa. We take like Nigeria. Eh? Mm -hmm. Nigeria have enough, of course, or, or resources. Oil. Also, petroleum. Resources. I think in the whole of Africa. Yeah. They even Lib watch Libya. At Angola. Mm? Libya has Libya. Mm? price of yeah, oil. Yeah, yeah. So when we watch at this, well, you have enough countries mm. in, on the continent that can actually produce uh, petroleum mm. for the consumption of Africa, mm. which even uh, give us the opportunity to export it to other continents. Mm. But unfortunately, as you are saying, mm. the resources are available, but the technology, the technology is definitely yes. now. Yes. So I yes. think yes. there is a kind of lack of political will to independently develop the African economy that can put us into viable position, we can actually make money by, by making oil exportation to other countries. Unfortunately, I think there's a failed type of leadership on the continent. That over-independence may be relying on the technology into other African or into other countries mm -hmm. have led to uh, the impact of Russia road becoming so heavy 
on the African continent. Because he rightly mentioned we is lacking. We saw Makasa going into Russia, uh, into Russia, pleading to Vladimir Putin to actually allow some amount of wheat to come on the continent. I think it was only after this, Ali Dangote, the richest man on the continent, has now what? Well, establish an oil refinery into Nigeria. Maybe that can even produce, I think, 300 or uh, 3,000 barrels or more than that per day. But what is actually happening on the continent? Now, other countries are not using this as an opportunity. Yeah, yeah but like I was saying, mm. some countries have discovered oil mm. and some are already into the business. Exactly. But again, mm. is that enough to, to, to service us in Africa? Or we can use it as an opportunity. Yes, we are already use, using it. But again, we need more from outside. We are not using it as an opportunity. Emerson. We did no, no. What I'm saying, saying, only it's, one, it's, one country. It's not enough. It's not enough. But there are countries that have, I mean, uh, 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 lower prices of fuel. For instance, I told you about Libya. I think Libya has yeah. the lowest when you look at the. the and it's because it is because yeah, oil they is do not produced. have yeah, oil yeah. is produced and they do not mm. have maybe independent government and most of those things that have been exploited. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It, Libya is not stable. Of course, yeah, it's not stable. So, so and what we are saying now. Mm. In terms of uh, food, in terms of fuel crisis, we need a total turnaround. Hmm? African leaders need to concentrate on the welfare of their people. And in terms of agriculture, to me, I mean, at this time, still depending on the West, still depending on food to be brought into our countries. So well, we have everything. Calculated in salt. Yeah, so. Um, I'm happy, for instance, where I live, the government has prioritized agriculture. And I think other countries should follow suit. And we don't just want to see those things um, in black and white. We want to see the physical action being done. Exactly. That's right. Prioritize, um, prioritizing agriculture is one thing, but yeah, making it practical is another fine. thing. We've had a lot, we have had a lot of theories. Yes, we've in had the past. a lot in the past. Okay. Right. So away from the economic aspect, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now we've, we've spoken about one, the shortage of uh, yeah. petroleum products mm -hmm. on the African continent, in some African countries, mm -hmm. or in most of the African Most countries. African. There is no country yeah. now. Most, most countries. Yeah, yes, every, most. every, every. Yeah, except but many. that has led to demonstrations. Yeah, except, and, except, except yeah. for a few. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Then we've also spoken about food, mm -hmm. food crisis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Russia war is also negatively impacting on, on us in that direction. Mm -hmm. Then again, of course, there's another one that, uh, that doesn't really have to do with the Ukraine-Russia war. Mm -hmm. But then we've seen, uh, I mean, also a kind of um, a kind of change uh, from from Asia. Mm -hmm. You know, China used to produce rice on on, on on industrial scale, but we've seen a change now from rice production from agriculture to technology. So that is also exacerbating the situation. We are seeing how the price of rice is just soaring in the sub region, for instance. But again, now away from the economic aspect of the Ukraine Russia war, the war. <coughs> sorry, I'm sorry. The war also reminds uh, a one of the events that led to World War II, for instance, the formation of allies. Mm -hmm. yeah? uh, so see. we are saying that uh, Russia is looking at NATO in this whole thing. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Russia is not even looking at Ukraine. Russia knows very well. Moscow is aware that uh, there are countries that are behind Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So now we are seeing that Moscow is moving ahead, creating alliances in Africa, for instance. Mm -hmm. So this one, to me, is a worrying sign. Is it? Is it for, for this, another war? Wars. Yeah, but but this the, the, the mm -hmm. problem of NATO creating alliances. In I'm Africa, talking about Russia. Yeah, Russia and mm -hmm. Russia creating alliances in Africa. Eh? Mm -hmm. To me, it is not a cup of tea because mm -hmm. Russia presence on the continent mm -hmm. is not just to create an alliance. Eh? Maybe it only it, Russia only want to create a situation where they can have people who sympathize with their ideology in in the with the notion of exploiting Africa. Look at the countries where Russia is involved. Hmm? You, you see Niger. Why is Russia in Niger? For the uranium. Definitely for the uranium. Then they are also in Burkina Faso and they are in Mali. But these are sub-Saharan countries and they are interconnected. Hmm. And Burkina Faso being under a junta regime, Niger being under under junta regime, Mali and the like of, of Guinea, they are also in Guinea, definitely on a cover, they are also in Guinea. Yeah. Yeah. So if they can succeed to create a total political pandemonium into this area, what do we do now? Do we start to exploit the natural resources, which are the uranium, which will help Russia in trying to make their weapons of mass destruction whatsoever thing? 
So you, I, 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 I somehow I agree with you, but in terms of them coming, they do not even rely on Africa because we are like handicaps. Unless it's because yeah, yeah, yeah but, but like what I was saying. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not that Russia had not been on the continent. Mm. Russia they had, had been, been they had been, yeah. yeah. but coming now, moving moving around, mm. creating a kind of block, block, trying to create a block. We saw the last meeting they had in, in, in South Africa. Yeah, the BRICS. The BRICS. Okay, so seeing that uh, they are trying to galvanize a kind of support. And this was a similar situation. That led to World, to World, World War II. Yeah. Yeah. We saw countries were moving around, creating alliances. Yeah, so some of us are a bit worried. About the situation, but is what, World War Three possible? Well, it, it, it's it's almost on the horizon when you look at things. Yeah, because yeah, today, today the they claim that she has been attacked by seven major countries, including uh, Iran, India, Syria. Fine. So this is what I'm saying. And people, and even World the War Three is, yeah. is almost on the horizon because the, the same the, the same circumstances that led to World War Two are almost repeating themselves today. We see the major powers moving around, creating alliances. And this is how World War II almost started. I think yeah. Africa is now suffering from what? From a political divide. You have oh. seen certain countries standing tall among others, saying we are not going to condemn nor support the world, like Syria and Mapusain. Yeah. We are seeing other African countries throwing support in for Israel. In. We are saying, well, like, in fact, now South Africa definitely is no longer taking a neutral position because they are now supporting. <laughs> Palestine because of what happened to them during the apartheid regime. Mm -hmm. And they think and feel that, especially the people in, in the Gaza region have been led by minority. And that totally took a reflection on them, like what we went through during our apartheid regime. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nancy Mandela was another student supporter or supporter of all, she was one of the student supporters of what, of, 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 of the people of Palestine. It's like those who live in the West Bank and Gaza, then, even within the Gola High. So when this war started, South Africa definitely, definitely, South Africans are definitely sympathizing with them. We have seen other African countries throwing support. So why Africa? We, yeah, yeah, we do not speak we, as we, a block. Yeah, we, we have some. We do not speak as a block. We have some. We not speak as uh, a block. Who are sitting on the fence. Hmm? Um, why? We have some people who have condemned why? Uh, 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 the attack. Mm -hmm. on, on Palestine, on Palestine. Mm -hmm. we have also some mm -hmm. who have not condemned they said it's a kind of retaliation but what we are saying mm -hmm. because we are more focusing on this Ukraine-Russia war and we see how the how Russia is moving around trying to have more allies I would say more friends on the continent and some countries like you said have openly declared their support for Russia Yeah, there are some countries that have just uh, remained sitting on the fence Mm -hmm. There are some they can open their hands to anyone that comes their way, mm -hmm. but by and large, what we are saying, the Russia Ukraine Russia war has had far-reaching consequences on the African continent, mm -hmm. on the Af on some, if not all, African countries. Oh, on the continent. oh, there's no, there's no country on the continent that has not been affected by the event that is happening into into Russia or between Russia and Ukraine. Let me just say in Ukraine, definitely, because Ukraine is responsible to supply major wheat on the continent. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Red Sea, the Black Sea, in fact, even there is now attack on the Red Sea. Yeah. Attack on the Red Sea. This is the latest development. And America now is now forced maybe to have 10 nations to form allies to protect all those ships that actually come with supply. And if events like that continue or it worsens, I wonder how we shall live on this continent. Yeah, like I said again, this this is this this brings uh, to this is a wake up call to African leaders hmm? mm -hmm. that uh, we might not be hundred percent independent of the West, but we should strive by any means, especially in time of food. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Food. Hmm? We should make ourselves self sufficient in food. Now, why are we, we why, why are we listening to the West? We shouldn't involve into any like uh, too much commercial agriculture, which lead us to uh, to destruction of our forest, making it. But they are not helping us because if I look like in the Congo Congo Bansing, I think uh, especially uh, I'm talking about the DRC, some solid attempt we have been made by the government, maybe to fell some of those trees, mm. and also involving to what agricultural production that we enable them to. Yes, exploit, I mean, to export rice and at the same time, they discover a huge amount of oil reserve. What do I say? Do we not? Mm. 
<laughs> but they are not helping the country. And if you can tell me, okay, in fact, in fact for they say the end justifies the means. But we are subscribing to the mentality of the West, yet we are crippling ourselves. I wonder why. Yeah, well, um, when you look at the when you look at our inability mm. to feel ourselves, I think it, it has some colonial legacies. Yeah, mm. when colonial when colonialism had its foothold on the continent, mm. Africans we are not taught how to I mean produce food to feed themselves. They were mostly taught how to produce uh, cash crops to feed uh, European industries. Mm -hmm. Now, for instance, when you come to Sierra Leone, you see where established uh, uh, cocoa plantations, uh, uh, coffee. Uh, of the rec of most recently, we see a lot of oil pan and others. Yeah, and all those things we produce, we don't eat them. Mm -hmm. they, we produce them on commercial basis. So let's assume if we were really taught how to produce food for ourselves, mm -hmm. especially our staple food rice. Yeah, and so. Those were things done to just keep us dependent. Hmm? Okay. Keep us dependent. So by and large, I think African leaders need to come together, go back to the drawing board. I mean, put a lot of resources into agriculture. And the agriculture should not just be done on the table. Let's go back to the soil. Let's have, if need be, let's have state farm. Not even one farm. Let's say, for instance, in every district, for instance, Elion, let's have, a, let's say, a state farm. Have people, have machines there. Have technical people working there. I mean, I think if we have, for instance, Elion has politically, or let's say geographically, Elion has 14 districts. So if we have 14, I mean, not, I mean, uh, state farms in Elion, that will go a long way. We have all the necessary equipment, farm equipment. Mm, that will go a long way. And even, like I was happy the other day, like just as uh, I started seeing, sometimes we have those beautiful things mm, being said, but they are not practicalized. They are not put into practice. The president, the current president of Sierra Leone, when he was campaigning as an opposition leader, he did say that when he comes to power, before anyone, any member, anyone going to parliament, that's uh, the legislature, should have a fan. She have no less than ten, um, I mean, a, a cattle, something like that. I heard of that. Yeah, but all those things. You see, we are not seeing them being put into practice. Yeah. So let's assume, even if our state actors have been forced, I will say this: they have been forced to have farms on their own. I mean, you will have the laymen following follow, following suit. Yeah, but sometimes we look low on on agriculture. But then again, looking at our population, the rapid growth of population. Subsistence, subsistence farming will not take us anywhere. So we need to mechanize our farming. We need to do more. We need to make large farms. We are able to feed ourselves. For instance, in Sierra Leone, history tells us that Sierra Leone was exporting rice in the 60s. So why has that stopped? What has gone wrong? Hmm? So we need to do more. We need to do more. I'm happy a few days back. I, I listened to the president elect <laughs> Joseph Obuaka, of Voice of um, America, VA, with uh, Peter Clothing, when he said, um, There's no need why Liberia should import food. Yeah, I hope it's not just going to that be. That is just a normal. Uh, I'm coming, it's not just be a political mm -hmm. statement on international media. It should be something put into practice. Liberia is one of the countries that has arable land for agriculture. Yeah, I mean, um, the government of Sierra has started something. Uh, I think um, it, it's going to force people to go back to the soil because now the price of rice is going to be increased. I think 10% or so has been added, will be added in mid effective 2024. So that's going to encourage more people to go into agriculture. Well, Edward, the bottom line is Africa, we are feeling the pinch of the war in the, the russian ukraine war economically and otherwise oh thank you very much i think uh, you said it all unfortunately we haven't learned any major lesson from whatsoever thing that is happening because uh, if it we are not so maybe africa would have galvanized itself 
try to provide an African solution. But instead, we are seeing Russia, we are seeing Ukraine itself, we are seeing China, we are seeing other Western countries invading on the continent, maybe to still continue to create a political divide across the continent, which is very wrong. And it is absolutely untaught for all. Uh, African leaders, normally when they are elected into office, they make colorful promises, but it's a matter of appealing them. Of course, Joseph Nimabaka was right to say, ideally, Liberia should not import rights. But why is she importing rights? It's because of the inability of the leadership to facilitate maybe uh, total agricultural production. We rely only on the West. Uh, maybe even the type of education system that was introduced on the continent have never been successfully changed. Because we do not need essential type of education. We need maybe middle level manpower of training, like those polytechnics and all that. Even our institution, educational institution, are definitely not helping. Now, with what is happening on the Western uh, continent, it is definitely, or let me just say in Europe, it is definitely affecting Africa. And if we cannot use this problem into Europe as an opportunity to establish strong. Uh, agricultural basis into Africa. I wonder what may happen. And if World War III happens, Africa will definitely continue. Maybe we, we, we will only be like parasite living on what comes from the West. It's been me and Emma Sine for Y with focus on Liberia coming to you with the latest maybe development on our continent in respect of the Russian Ukraine war. And we hope to come to you with this program next time. Thank you for listening and thank you for following us. Don't forget to hit the share button. Tomorrow, join me, same place, same time, to discuss new development on the continent. Before we leave the program, I think there is a news, or maybe galvanizing, especially on radio stations, that, especially the BBC. Yesterday, instead of people celebrating Christmas into Nigeria, especially in the northern part of Nigeria, some People now they are alleging that it's unbanded, but people are saying no, it's uh, Aswa, <laughs> that is the like independent uh, state of uh, West uh, Islamic West Africa. Some people are saying Boko Haram, some people are even saying IPOP, they attack one village, mutilated people as if they deserve not to live. So, all of those things are happening. It's a shame and it's a disgrace, of course. Congratulations to Kisagedi, he has been re elected, and also. Uh, uh, Abdil Patal Assisi of Egypt are also being re-elected on the continent and we hope that come 20, in 2023 Africa experience a lot of elections because normally our elections on the continent have been done for five years and we hope that come 2024, each and every election that will be conducted on the continent will happen free and fair. Even uh, up, uh, get what this fellow Emma Simanagawa of uh, Zimbabwe was recently re-elected and is now trying to maybe reorganize certain election into certain places that will enable him to have absolute majority majority uh, in the house. Guinea has not been changed, same military regime. <laughs> Burkina Faso is the same thing. Mali is the same thing. And the latest one definitely was in Angola. And a few uh, the other one that was just about to happen, or maybe, maybe the issue had been arrested, it was South Sudan. It was widely alleged that the government of South Sudan was about to be overthrown. That led to the president, uh, South Bakia, arresting key members uh, into his cabinet and also some military officers claiming that they have the intention to overthrow. We just pray and hope that 2024 should definitely not be as what 2033 was because we had a series of coup d'etat on the continent. Really, it's, it's, it's like it's Africa, we are going back to the 60s. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it's been me and Emma Sine for focus on Liberia. Thank you very much. Good day, good night.